Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am. And today, we're going to be making our way to the Lakeside Crystal Cave. But before we do, like always, let's talk about a few things that I did off screen. And really, all I did was farm up a bunch of runes, go to EG the Blacksmith, and buy the Sombering Smithing Stones number three and number four. And then I went ahead and bought the Talisman from them. So that's all I did. I didn't do anything else. And let's go ahead and get started with making our way to the Lakeside Crystal Cave. But before we do, let's go ahead and start putting some markers down. First marker is going to be right here. The second marker is going to be right here. Third marker is going to be up top here. And then the fourth marker is going to be right here. Top on Torrent. We're going to ride down this path here. It'll veer off over here. Just keep following it and then head right. Follow it up top. We're going to be coming up on a silver scarab. But we want to be careful. There are bats over here, so just keep that in mind. So give us the Ash of War sword dance. Pretty cool Ash of War for all you melee characters. Let's hop off Torrent. We're gonna head into this catacomb. This is a pretty easy catacomb. Nothing really difficult in here. Just some gargoyles or imps, but I still think they look like gargoyles. First one's gonna be right there. Backstab on him. Get some grave violet. And then off to the right, there's going to be another one. Be careful. We're going to pull this lever over here real quick. That'll open up the boss door. And then right here is going to be the summoning pool. Go ahead and activate that. Grab some Grave Glove Wart. And then we have an imp throwing some knives at us. Right here, we have an illusory wall. an ambush so be careful so you have one off to the left and then one in front of you he he won't come after you until after you get about right here then he'll start running at you get the watchdog staff pretty cool item if you're going for a strength slash um magic build you can use that i think you need something like 30 or 35 strength to wield it right there is a pressure plate be very careful you don't want to set the trap off there's also an imp right here grab some more grave glove wart even more and then we have an illusory wall right here. 
What I like to do is pull my bow out, two-hand it, shoot it at that imp. Also, we are using the jellyfish shield. Pretty cool shield. I said in the last video that I would showcase it. And I am. It's actually got a unique effect in uh, giving us a cool buff that will boost our attack. Get the Rhea Lucaria Soldier Ashes. And then don't forget about the pressure plate there. Right here's another illusory wall. And then we have one more imp to kill. I was hoping to get a backstab on him, but didn't work out. Grab some ghost glove wart too. A rune arc. There's also another illusory wall right here. So you can go either way, over here or over here. Totally up to you. We're going to go down this path. Pick up some root resin. Hit another illusory wall. So many in this uh, catacomb. And then some grave glove wart and another illusory wall. So right here, this boss is really easy. It's going to summon in a Crucible Knight. We're not going to focus on the Crucible Knight. It'll just keep uh, summoning it up. We have to kill a Spirit Calling Snail. Super easy fight unless you don't know what to do. Then it can be very frustrating. So we're going to summon in Oleg. He's going to take aggro for the Crucible Knight. And we're going to two-hand our weapon and then see how it's glowing right here. This is how we know this is where the snail is. It's going to disappear. And then we see it glowing right here. So we know to aim right there. Super easy. Not a long fight at all. We get the Glintstone Sorcerer Ashes for killing the Spirit Calling Snail. Let's go ahead and take this marker off right there. And then we're going to fast travel to the Revenger's Shack. Let's put our lantern on real fast. Call Torn out. And then we're going to pull out our bow. We're going to need it here in just a moment. We're going to head down to the water's edge. Over there at the gazebo. Or at least that's what I'm calling them, is a gazebo. We're going to pick up some smithing stones. Just be careful for the land octopuses over here. You don't want to fight them. You don't have to. No, I'm not going to. We're going to get three smithing stone twos from that gazebo. And then we're going to shoot the balloon and get ourselves golden rune six. Good stuff. We're going to veer off to the right here. It's going to be some marionettes. Just be careful not to get hit by them. They're not really that big of a threat. We're going to hop off here. Light this grace. And then inside here, it wants us to use the emo air edition. We also have to have a sorcerer's kind of like helmet or head or whatever to do this. We don't have that, but we can still get inside this tower. Well, at least up top. For now, we're just going to pick up the Cuckoo Glint Stones. And then we're going to come around the back. Grab ourselves some magic grease. And 
and then we'll hop on torrent and then if we come up on this wall and hop over here and get off torrent go to the top here Open up the chest and we get ourselves a memory stone. So for all you spellcasters, you get another slot for some spells. Let's hop back on torrent. Then over to this wall. Write it down. And I'm just going to try to give the marinettes a wide berth. I don't want to fight them. So over here is a guardian. We'll take him out just so he doesn't get in the way. And then we'll activate this summoning pool. We'll drink ourselves a flask. Summon an Oleg. Now that we're close to the Erd Tree Avatar, we'll buff ourselves up for some extra damage. Okay, back up. Get that stagger. Critical. And then take out the Erd Tree Avatar. Really easy fight if you fought enough of them. Alright, for killing the Erd Tree Avatar, we get the Cerulean Crystal Tear. We also get the ruptured crystal tier. Let's hop back on torrent. And we're gonna make our way down. Oh, you know what? I didn't put any markers down. I'm getting ahead of myself. So right about, I would say here, it's gonna be our first marker. And then right about here's gonna be our second marker. Right here is going to be our third marker. And then over, I would say here is going to be the fourth marker. And then our fifth marker is going to be right there. Now we can start making our way to some markers. I know this pathing because I practice so much that I forget to put markers down sometimes. We're gonna go through these trees here. Just for a short moment. Over here is going to be a crab. Just be really careful. Grab the item and just run. So it's going to be a somber smithing stone. One. We're going to get two of them. And we're going to head straight south. Just straight south. As soon as... Oh, I don't want to get hit by the crab. I was trying to show everybody, but he, he's coming after me. Right here is going to be our turn. But as soon as you pick up that item, just turn directly around and head south until you get to this opening right here. This is where we want to be. That crab wanted my cheeks. Right here we have a silver scarab. We get a somber smithing stone too from it. And then over here, I'm going to take this marker off. 
I saw that we didn't pick it up, but because there was a crab right there, I didn't want to take any chances. They can hurt. Also, just a heads up, there are two crystalline enemies over here. One's right there with a spear, and the other one is just right there where I'm facing with a, with a spear as well. Be careful, or don't, and go fight them and, you know, smash their faces in, or whatever you want to do. Also, make sure that you're on torrent. This is a poisonous swamp, so keep that in mind. Right here is the tree with a smithing stone, too. And then we'll get rid of that marker. And over here at this gazebo that's just north is going to be a grace. So we light that grace. And then the tree that we got the item at is just right there. Now be very careful. Over here there are a ton of crabs that want to pinch your face off. So try not to get their attention and come over here to get yourself a silver scarab. That's going to give us the Ash of Ash of War, <laughs> Vow of the Indomitable. Pretty good uh, spell for those of you that are doing a faith build. Even if you're not doing a faith build. We're going to come up here. We can see Nefeli Lu. Let's get rid of that marker. And then we're going to talk to Nefeli Lu. See what's up with her. Oh, it's you. Well, what do you make of it? What's happened to this village? I witnessed a sight much the same in my infancy. The oppression of the weak. Murder and pillage unchecked. A waking nightmare made by men. But this time, I'm a woman grown. And though the suffering cannot be undone, I can still mete out justice. Justice to the oppressors. Let the scars I carve remind them. I am Nefeli Lu, warrior. So she seems pretty upset on what's going on over here. We're going to take out these Albanorix here. We'll grab that item in a minute. I just don't want the Albanorix to be attacking me while I'm trying to grab it. They do drop the Albanoric Blood Clots. We get a larva, Larval tier here. That will allow us to respec our character later on. We can't do it right now. We actually have to get through the main dungeon here in Liurnia before we can. Activate the summoning pool. then we'll light that grace and we'll sit at that grace in just a moment but first I want to come over here across the bridge see a skull can't let it slide gotta gotta get it every item counts right here we get the crystal sword Pretty decent sword for anybody that is a spellcaster. We also picked up an Albanoric Blood Clot as well. Let's just rest at this grace for just a second. And then up top here, we're going to have our first perfumer. We're going to want to kill him as quick as we can. So hop off torrent. 
and then spam R1. Over here we have an Albanoric hiding. Poor guy. Right here we're going to roll into that pot. Not yet. We're actually going to grab an item first. It's going to be the ivory sickle. Now roll into this pot. Don't hit it. It's an NPC we want to converse with. So let's do that now. Please no, dear me. <laughs> I haven't a clue. No secrets lie with me, not a one. Oh, please leave me be. Wait then, you're not one of them. Well, what a relief. <laughs> oh, goodness me. I am Alvas and Alvinoric. As you can see, we're finished. The whole village is finished. The curse mongers have destroyed everything. No one that remains has their wits about them. I beg you. Would you look after this medallion? You must keep it out of the curse mongers' hands. And if you should meet the young Albinorek Latena, then please give it to her. A chosen land awaits us, Albinorix. The medallion is the key that leads to the city. It's only a quaint treasure for we who cannot make the journey. But for dear Latena, it is needed to fulfill her purpose. My legs will soon fade, and with them my life. Alas, this is the immovable fate of all Albinorex. <laughs> so that poor guy, Albus, just gave us one of the two pieces that we're going to need to get to a secret area much later into the game. So do be sure that you talk to Albus. Don't skip over him because we're going to get a whole nother area of the game by getting that um, item from him. Right here we can summon in Nefeli Lu. We're, we're going to summon her in. Uh, just because lore wise I feel like she would want revenge. Right over there we have a dog. We're going to shoot him. He's going to glitch out. I don't know why. He just always glitches out right there. And then we have another dog down here eating some of the dead Albanorix as well but he will jump up to us come on bud there we go take him out and then we have one more dog behind that tree where the fire is but first let's summon in Nefeli Lu and then we'll drink our flask summon in Oleg now this is most definitely overkill. So we have Nefeli Lu in. Let's go ahead and buff ourselves. Let good old Omen Killer try to hit us, but he'll miss us because we have our crystalline bubble tier on. And I can't get over to him because of the fire. I mean, I could, but I just don't want to walk through the fire. This is not a hard boss fight. You shouldn't need Nefeli Lu in with you. I just did it because of the lore implications. 
And for killing the Omen Killer, he's going to drop the Crucible Knot Talisman. In my opinion, one of the absolute useless, most useless talismans in the game. All it does is prevents you from getting staggered whenever you get shot in the head with an arrow. That's it. And in my opinion, I don't know if anybody else is getting shot in the head with an arrow a bunch of times, but I am not. <laughs> I am not getting shot in the head that many times to be like, okay, I need this talisman on. Come down here, grab a ruin arc, and then I'll quit ranting and put some markers down. Our first marker is going to be right here. Second one is going to be right here. This is going to be the Lakeside Crystal Cave. And then what we're going to do is fast travel to the Grey's Folly on the lake. I'll see everybody over there. Let's turn on our lantern. Hop on Torrent. We're going to head northeast just for a moment, and then we're going to head southeast-ish. East, southeast. Just head in the direction of the marker. We're going to see some different types of albinorics over here. Just grab the dexterity knot crystal tier. That's going to give you extra dex whenever you put it into your wondrous flask of physic and drink it. Not really important to our build. Now we're just heading southeast to the last marker. Hop off right here. Let's light this grace. Get ourselves an arteria leaf and activate the summoning pool. Right here, be careful. There is a demi human that will jump out at you. If he grabs you, he's gonna stab you a bunch of times. That's not really that fun. Take these demi humans out, grab ourselves some hefty beast bones. Take out the big guy first if you can. And behind these boxes here is going to be a demi human. And then in the bushes, it's going to be another one. And then you have the big demi human chieftain, I think they're called. Take him out fairly easily. Get some silver fireflies. And then right here is a much cooler talisman compared to the last one we got. This is the spear talisman. If you have any weapons that have thrusting attacks, you can boost the damage with putting that talisman on. Also, if you want to boost your damage even more and you have a weapon that has a thrusting attack when you charge it up, you can put on the talisman that boosts your charged attacks and then the talisman that boosts your um, damage with thrusting attacks and get double the damage on a boss or a hard enemy. So we hop down right here. We're going to hop down again right here. And we're going to just keep hopping down until we make it to the brazier down below. So right here.
Take out this snail. Be careful, there are three snails in here. They're not really that much of a threat, but if you're not expecting them, they can do some damage. Right here, we can't pick up any more knives, throwing knives that is. Guess I should have sold some before coming through here. It's all right, it's all right, not a big deal. And then over here, there are a ton of snails kind of curled up in a ball. Pretty easy to kill them. And then right here, if we step off the ledge just slightly, we can fall down to get ourselves some soft cotton. Smithing stone four, smithing stone two, and then a lump of flesh. Now be really careful, there are three snails over here, but it's hard to see because it's so dark down here. Okay, boss is gonna be right here. Let's go ahead and drink our flask. We have fought this boss before, it's just a bloodhound. We'll buff ourselves while he's aggroed towards Oleg. Oh, I should have rolled through that. Come on now. Not that. That was in the middle of the attack, but... Oh, well, we still beat him. He's super easy. Not hard at all. So for killing the Bloodhound Knight, we get the Cerulean Amber Medallion. So for anybody that's a spellcaster, or maybe not a spellcaster, but needs that extra FP, you can put that on to give yourself a little bit of extra FP. We're not gonna bother with it. We have plenty of FP. Right here is Latina. We're gonna be talking to her in just a minute. She's actually got a lot of important dialogue. Right now we're going to light the grace. Come up over here, grab ourselves a rune arc, and then we're gonna talk to Latina. Foul tarnished. What do you want? I told the all hearing brute that I possess no such medallion. Or have you come to take more from me? Was my other half not enough? Oh. Do you speak true? So old Albus entrusted his medallion to you. <sighs> then I have no choice but to trust that this was his dying will. Let's try again. I'm Latena, an Albanoric, the same as old Albus. My apologies for my coarse words earlier. I presume the worst. Seeing that you're another tarnished like that all-hearing brute, I hope that you will forgive me. Hmm. The medallion's better off in your hands anyway. Would you consider doing me a great service? I must go back. There is something I must do. Even if I must say farewell to my wolf, Lobo, will you show me the way? To the land of Mikola's Halig Tree. If you accept, I would gladly apprise you of the whereabouts of the medallion's other half. Thank you kindly. They say the other half of the medallion is beyond the Forbidden Lands, north of the Earth Tree, in Castle Sol, on the mountain tops of the Giants. Accessible by the Grand Lift of Rold. Then I suppose it's time. Farewell, Lobo. My faithful wolf. My better half. I will go with the Tarnished. So that our journey will not have been in vain. Forgive me, Lobo. Call upon me when needed. And I will fight at your side. So she told us two important pieces of information. Number one, she said the all-hearing brute. 
And the all-hearing brute is Gideon the all-knowing. In the beginning cutscene, you saw Gideon the all-knowing covered with ears. That's kind of like a foreshadow of like who he is. And then secondly, she told us where to find the other piece of the medallion, which is in Castle Soul. And that is much, much further into the game. We're not even going to be over there until pretty much the end of the game. Actually, the end of the game is when we're going to end up getting that piece of the medallion. Now that that's all been said, let's go ahead and fast travel to the beginning of the Lakeside Crystal Cave. I'll see everybody over there and we'll end the video when we're over there. All right, everyone. I think this is where we're going to end the video. I want to start by telling you all thank you so very much for stopping by. It really does mean the world to me. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button and let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or good night, whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.